This, the scripture says this about the devil. The devil rages for he knows he has but a short time. Everybody thinks this is this big, bad boogeyman of the devil. You know, the devil, the devil's right in here. You know, the devil rages for he knows he had a short time. I've seen a guy outside of a, uh, 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 a, a woman's dress shop and his wife was inside. And that guy was leaning on the horn. Everybody in the community was looking on the block, was looking at this guy. He was raging, his face was beat red. He was so angry because his wife was in that shop taking too much time. And that was the devil's. That's the devil in that guy. Raging, for he knows he has but a short time. And people that do that have that consciousness tend to die young. Yeah. Very good. You're very perceptive, girl. Um, but the devil rages. The devil rages. In other words, Mars, yes, Mars is raging, anger and all that. But Saturn is much more, how would I say this? Its, it's reaction is more to time than anything else. <coughs> I had a watch <coughs> years ago. It's called a Hellbros. What a name. Think about it. Anybody know what that means? Hell <coughs> Brothers. And on symbol on the symbol on that watch was Saturn symbol. It was a famous watch back years ago. Everybody knew about him. Just like Bulova, it was a major name. <coughs> so the the watchmakers know from where their trade came from. And uh so <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, because you got to remember something. The moon is emotionally ch childlike. You see what I mean? Um, and that, that quality is going to be amplified because they, they tend to get very emotional about their about time, Father Time, Saturn. So for them, th those kind of aspects in a chart, it's like a child throwing a tantrum. You see, it's like the little child. That's what the moon is, you know. And um, it's probably came from their childhood. I'm sure if you looked at the childhood of that person, you'd find the parents, which is the sun, the moon, and Saturn, okay, were very much demanding of that child that, that they ate everything on their plate, that they got great grades, and that, you know, like you think that's all, we all do that. Well, the way they did it, the, the time constraints they put on that child's life, was probably very severe because that's the emotional development of that child is the moon. And when Saturn's doing that, you know, there's been some strong discipline, Saturn, against that young child, formative ages of that child. And you know that when you look at a chart. You're, you're looking at their childhood. Yes, sir. Um, isn't it the sextile and the sign of the chart? No. Um, not necessarily is it going to be that, but, but you know, you, again, there's got to be something in that chart. I'm sure if you look at Saturn, it's not just those two aspects. I mean, is it afflicting the sun? Is it? Yeah. If the sun, okay. So, you know, Saturn is and the sun are also, the difference between, between the two, the sun is more conscious. Um, it's more, um, more, you will do it my will, my will, sun. Where moon is much more emotional and much more childlike, and um, oh, how would I say? You know, it's coming from a different part of their their soul, their being. You know, when it's the moon, uh, we get we deal with the spirit and the soul, and uh, Saturn afflicting the sun can be very hard too. Yes, sir. So um, apparently, I have a moon afflicting um, Saturn in my chart. Do you? So um, how I deal with this whole impatience thing, because sometimes I do get impatient, and when I act, it usually results in like, something really bad happening. So what I do is I just remember that I have you know, an impatience issue, and I just give myself a little time, and then everything works out. So you've learned and developed. Yeah, so I just, I just sit and wait. Um, and if I don't, then bad things happen. 
Yeah, because we, we know him. Yeah. <laughs> we better get it done. <laughs> yeah. But see, the moon Saturn opposition. Um, this is no I mean, it's hard because it, we're talking about. No, you can say whatever. But see, the moon, moon, opposition, the moon opposition Saturn. The moon opposition Saturn in a chart represents the conflict between the mother and the father. That's that's um, impacted your life. It's very much that the father, especially because the father is in Saturn when it's Saturn influence. Um, against the moon means that uh, the, there's maybe been, um, how can I say this, too much discipline from the father to you emotionally that has somehow possibly impaired your own ability to deal with things and your ability to have this sense of urgency to get things done may have come from that side very much Saturn. Okay, I don't know. But anyway, let's go. Let's go for, forward with this. I want to I want to share with you something that I first I want you to get this real well and then I want you to do something else. I want to take you through um, we've been through some of this but I want to share some things with you to get you really thinking about uh, uh, influenza. You remember all this, right? Okay. Satisfy has its root in Saturn. Saturday does too, as well as satire. The word satisfies from Saturn. As is satiate, what's satiate mean? Anybody know? Huh? Fill up one census. Did somebody say that? Yeah, exactly. That's satiate. So why do you think that the early Christians spent so much time in the disciples doing something called fasting? They're trying to break this control of this satiation of Saturn in their life. That's what that whole thing, the discipline was about. Jovial, Latin for Jupiter, which means born under a lucky planet or Jupiter, hence happy and healthy. By the way, um, the best indicator of a person's ability to see the life in a very positive, very affirmative, very um, uh, optimistic, very jovial, very happy way is the powerful Jupiters in their chart. Okay, And if you see somebody that has that position, you can generally know a little bit about their disposition, just as well as Saturn. We tend to look up Saturn a lot. Question? Yeah. Does uh, Jupiter, Saturn, the conjunction make it a powerful Jupiter or a powerful Saturn? What sign is it in? Both in, in different signs. One is Capricorn. Which one's in Capricorn? Uh, Saturn. And the other one is of course, in uh, Aquarius. Aquarius. Aquarius, okay. Well, first of all, the is very powerful. It's in its own sign. Very powerful. And um, the, the thing about having it in that sign gives it its own dignity and strength. And um, generally, also, one thing about Saturn, Saturn very often is a blessing to, as we get older, if it's not afflicted too bad. So people that have a strong Saturn generally age well and they tend to gain more foundational strength as they age because Saturn is the what the foundation stone. So they also very often um, have the quality of leadership, which is what Capricorn is about, Saturn. We're talking about that. Jupiter and Aquarius is interesting. They're com are they conjunct? The right edge end of, within the end of a sign and the beginning of a next sign, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Jupiter and Aquarius, Jupiter does all right in Aquarius. It's not a rough sign for it. Um, it's, um, it's more, what do we say of uh, the key word of uh, Aquarius is what? I know. I know, right? So, so Jupiter in that sign can bring a very much of a um, kind of a new age uh, perspective about religion, philosophy, higher understanding, because Jupiter is all that, okay? Jupiter is the Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So people that have that will generally have uh, a very open mind about things that are radically different from the established norm of what we think of and as very, Mediterranean, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know this person? Yes, very well. Okay. <laughs> you. <laughs> Good for you, girl. Good for you. I got myself into it here, didn't I? I got to be careful up here, I'll tell you. I'm glad that was a good reading. <laughs> uh, spare me that, girl. Don't do that to me. Anyway. <laughs> would you, would you those dolphins 
Saturn, yeah, it will. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Jupiter, Jupiter is interesting. Saturn rules Father Time, but it does everything to do with it, especially now that I know who it is, I can expand on that because I know she works with numbers. She's an accountant. She does all that stuff about, you know, figures. That's Saturn stuff. And she, her strength is working with numbers. You don't like it, though. But see, he has Jupiter and Aquarius sitting there with it. And what does Jupiter want? What's Aquarius want? Aquarius wants freedom, and Jupiter wants a better future. And so these are tied together, which means they're inextric inextricably put together in a way I, I, I wish I could break them apart. And I know that about you. You've been trying to do that for years. You know? You have. You know, you should be the herbalist, all the new age stuff. You want to be an herbalist. You want to have your own shop. All the things that are keeping her bound down is the need for what? To work at this other stuff that she doesn't really enjoy, which is what? Capricorn, discipline, Saturn. I got to do what's my career, what I know, if I'm going to survive, even though my Jupiter Aquarius says I want a future that's much more radically different than that. Yes. Yeah. And Well, okay. I can tell you if you read a book called Cosmic Clocks. It's been around for a long time, but it was by written by a man named Michael Gokalen. And he set about to disprove astrology back a long time. He was a Frenchman, and he studied at Sorbonne in France. And he set about to disprove astrology, and what he ended up doing was finding parallels that were two careers that were impossible to discount. And what he found was that certain planets in certain positions tended to give certain abilities and gifts to people that made them excel in that particular profession. Moon Jupiter, for example, rising in the east or on the seventh house cusp or in a, up near the tenth, made for journalists and writers. Okay, um, That's the profession they most excelled at. Saturn and Mars did the opposite, particularly Saturn. It made military leaders. Strange, huh? What would you expect from that, right? <laughs> the only country he found an anomaly for this was Germany, and he couldn't figure it out because every country he, he went to and studied and researched, Saturn and Mars were the major configurators for military leaders. And Germany <coughs> didn't have to be so for, for something he couldn't understand that people that didn't even have that position seemed to be militarily gifted. So maybe something in the genetics of the Germans, you know, that give them the discipline and the, the qualities that maybe override something, I don't know. But it's a great book, it's called Cosmic Clocks. And there's another book he wrote called The Scientific Basis of Astrology. Michael Gokalen. Um, my wife would probably correct my French, but that's how I probably said. G-A-U-Q-U-E-L-I-N. I, I know you can get his book still. His wife carried on his work after he died. But um, I think it's good to read those books because it'll give you some little insights when you're doing charts about things that the typical astrology won't read you or give you. And you'll say, wow, this is interesting. This guy's really uncovered some powerful links between planetary positions. So, um, okay, okay, so, Father Time, we did all this about St. Nicholas, right? You all know, he gave, uh, gave charcoal a rock to give coal a rock to the socks when they were bad. Um, Saturn, St. Nick, which character of Father Time, you look, you just go in, the, in any dictionary and look up Old Nick. Old Nick means the devil. Strange, huh? We use in the nick of time to denote a portion of time. In the nick of time. They got out of there just in the nick of time. What is it? Saint Nick. It's Nicholas. It's Saturn. It's all that stuff. Um, Saint Nicholas, the fault, find, and accuse, which causes separation division, which is the role of Saturn. Santa Claus was called Saint Nick, which came from Old Nick, a name to describe the devil. Uh, nick of time. I, okay, I just said all that in there. Anyway, so Saturn's withholding good from the naughty children at Christmas and Sun and Capricorn and rewarding the good children, which is the true role of Saturn in our chart. He's stern yet fair. He's strict and demanding, but a benevolent father figure when it's called for. And that's something you want to recognize in a chart. 
just because you have Saturn in a chart, it's not all bad stuff. If you're, if you're disciplined, if you're a good child, he'll reward you, okay? Your, your, your patience, your uh, commitment to a goal, all that Saturn stuff will eventually pay off, and he'll reward you for that. It's like the boss that's watching you at work, the guy that leaves early every day or just leaves, wait, can't wait for that clock to pick so he can leave work, and the other guy stays back and finishes his job or does what he's got to do. The boss sees all that. And guess who gets it promoted eventually? You thought you were getting away with something by leaving early, and you thought you were getting away with something by not being dedicated to your job. But the boss, the boss, he kind of like Saturn, and he says, well, this person deserves a little break. Okay, Kronos or Saturn rules chronometers, watches, measuring devices, measure of all things, the divider of time and space. It's the consciousness of the divided state, which is opposed to the Jupiter state of wholeness, wholeness, Integrity and unity. Interesting. Have you ever been? Have you ever noticed some days you, you feel literally divided and alienated, and you feel separate, and you can't figure out what it is, and you say, "I just can't get myself together today." You know, I don't feel at one with myself or anybody outside of me. That's when Saturn's working in your chart. You, you know, you can look at your chart, kind of see what's influencing that chart. When those days come, you know, it's hard. Because, you know, there's nothing more blissful than to be feeling at one or in love, okay? You can see it. People radiate it. You can tell it when they're in love. You can tell when they're experiencing it. It's very real. You know, have you ever, have you ever, you've, have, has everybody in here been in love at a time in their life? Has, who's not been in love? Anybody? Never? Everybody's been in love in this room, right? Even if it was a short time, you were, till the illusions came in and you said, <laughs> Right, you know? I said, whoa, wake up. What did I see in this guy, right? Okay. <laughs> so, moment of bliss, right? As the older we get, the more we realize that, don't we? So, anyway, but how many of you have been in hate? Nobody. You don't ever say that. You know why? Because to be in hate, to be in love is a merging thing. It's, it's joining in. It's I am part of. I'm unified. I'm together. I'm whole with another person. That's what love is. But you don't say I'm in hate. It's interesting, isn't it? Think about that. It's, so, so the divided state. Okay. Every day should be a celebration of the birth of life and love in your life. Okay. That's all right. We did that before. Okay. Saturn here, the devil is the author of confusion. Ah, now look at this. He's the accuser of our brethren. He's the tester of faith in God. He's the deceiver. He's a liar. He's a murderer. He's the maya of the Hindus, the Shiva destroyer of the Hindus. He's like a lion seeketh whom he might devour. That's what the scripture says. He's the divider of time and space. Mythologically, Kronos was the devourer of all of his children. He's like a roaring lion, the scripture says, that seeketh whom he might devour. It's the same spirit. The Christians adopted it and took it into their Satan, the devil. But it's important to know those things because I'll tell you what, the Christianity behind the astrology is powerful. Once you understand these symbols, you'll realize that they're really universal symbols in a lot of different religions. You know, if you, you, you know if you, when you're in a state of... <laughs> I remember sitting in, in, when I was younger and I was married to Linda, my ex, and we had two young children. And I was sitting in an apartment and I was putting together astrology classes. This is, I don't know how many years ago, 35 maybe. But I, I was struggling and had uh, all of a $350 a month rent to pay. This is back in the 70s. That sounds ridiculous today. You know what I mean? <laughs> Multiply that by, uh, I don't know how much today. But the point being, that I remember sitting there in great depression, feeling alienated, separated, because the classes, I used to go out to these big apartment complexes, one in uh, Schaumburg, and Schaumburg there was really big complexes, nice apartments, and one was called uh, Walden. And I would go and I'd put flyers out to the, every, every door. I'd get permission, of course. And then I'd use their recreation center, which they love to have activities, and I would set together, bring together classes from the 
um, from the uh, apartment complexes. And I was sitting there and we didn't hardly have anybody call, I didn't have anybody sign up, and I was worried about my rent, and just big 350 a month, you know, and I was struggling and trying to figure out what I was going to do, and I was in this great kind of divided state. And all of a sudden I had a eureka moment. I don't know how to describe it except that I felt at one, I felt whole, I felt complete, I felt faith-filled, I felt confident, and it just came over me like a wave, and I realized I had nothing to fear except as a fear itself, as we've heard. And I sat there for a minute and just got my whole composure back. No more divided, no more alienated, no more separated, at one with the world and everything. And the phone blew off the hook. Phone call after phone call after phone call, students trying to get in class. It got so many students came in that in that hour, I'm telling you, it was like I'd get off one, another would ring. It, the, it got so bad, people would call me. I said, look, we're filled up. Ron, I've got to be in this class. I'll give you double the amount of money. I've got to be in this class. <laughs> All right, you're in. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> but it's like I was finding this whole thing changed, but it didn't change. It just changed when I changed. It changed that moment that I had that kind of euphoric moment of unity. And somehow I think it reaches out. It goes further than you. Uh, it embraces more of the universe than you know when you have those moments. So to get out of that state, okay? And notice what it says. Here's something important here with your astrology. Notice one of the first things it says. The devil is the author of what? Confusion. Confusion. It's, like, um, it's like the ice cream store that's got 31 flavors. You went in for ice cream, but until you get in and now you got 31 choices, now I'm really confused. <laughs> you know what I mean? Too many numbers here, too much to choose from. You know, that's the kind of the, the confusion you get with numbers and with, with Saturn. But he's a devil of, he's the author of confusion. Now, think about this. What is confusion? Think about the word. Double-minded. Very good. Double-minded. Yeah, that's exactly right. In fact, there's a scripture that says something about double-minded. Do you know what it is? A double-minded man cannot stand. Okay? A double-minded. And, you know, have you met people like that? I um, like that. Right? Um, you asked me what I thought about something. I, I don't know. No answer. I don't know. I'd I'd be a, I have Saturn square Mercury, so I was afraid to, to speak. Because I wasn't brought up to express what I thought. I was, you know, dumped down on me. How beautiful, yeah. So, you just saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's Saturn Mercury. That is a good explanation of Saturn Mercury. Confusion of mind. Right. The devil is the author of what? Confusion. What does it do to Mercury? Confuses the mind. Okay? Befuddles it. Keeps it constantly feeling what? Not worth anything. Remember what Saturn is? I'm not worthy to be crucified as my savior. I'm not worthy. So when you look at Saturn in these charts, or your charts, whether you're looking at a relationship chart, Saturn's still speaking to you the same way if it's affecting a planet in your chart. It's trying to tell you these are areas we're going to have some conflicts. Okay? Doesn't mean that they're insurmountable. Doesn't mean you don't get in a relationship because of that. Maybe you go in it with your eyes open and you'll do well with it because you'll know how to deal with it, okay? Does it make sense? Okay, it's not all negative, so okay. All right, so Maya of the Hindus. That's what I think I broke through when I had that moment, that the Maya, the illusion that I'm separated from good or God. You know, that's what Maya is. It's the illusion. And once you break through that illusion, then you see real clearly, you know? What's that song I like so much? I can see clearly now, the clouds have all parted. Exactly, yeah. That's how I, I used to love that song. I'd listen to it so much. I can see clearly now. Anyway, okay, so divide our time and space. Is that all bad? No. You know, it's not all bad. The divider of time and space. I was never good at math when I was a child. You know, I got a very weak Saturn. I got a Saturn in Aries in my fourth house. But uh, that also shows the years of impoverishment that I went through in my early childhood. 
Saturn in my fourth, which rules early, early childhood and home. You see it? So anyway, okay, let's kind of move on here. Saturn rewarder of them that follow, follow the law. You notice what that is? The rules. You ever work for somebody like that? I mean, you do the, you'll do it this way. Or you live with somebody like that? This are the rules. This is what you're going to do. And I'm setting down the rules. And you better follow them. If you don't, there's going to be consequences, right? So where Jupiter, the giver of grace, unmerited favor, and forgiveness. Jupiter, the Jupiterian quality person is not going to be a law. You notice I've never given you a test. I, I gave you one, I think, didn't I? In the first, I tried to give you a test. I'm not a tester. You know what I mean? Saturn's a tester. <laughs> But I'm a Jupiter guy. I'm not good at that stuff. <laughs> you know, it's, by, it's not by works, it's by grace. That's why you're all here, you know. So anyway, you're either under the law or you're under the grace. And I can't emphasize that enough as an astrologer. If you can break people out from under this feeling of the curse of the law, remember that it's called the law is a curse. And you can break that curse. How do you break it? You live under grace. How do you get under grace? You accept unmerited favor. What's unmerited favor? It's forgiveness. What is forgiveness? It's giving. It's forgiving it. It's letting it go. I'm no longer guilty. He's taken my my sins. Okay, very Christian principle, but it's true. You know. All right. So Satan is an angel. Oh, he's an angel, but he's a fallen angel. Satan works with God's permission. If you don't believe so, read the story of Job. Satan rules sex and the regenerative, regenerative act. Satan is described as the serpent, uh, which is basically the kundalini of the Hindus, the serpent force. The raising up of the serpent force on the spine is the role of the enlightened being. Moses raised up the serpent on the staff for the healing of the nation. Uh, the symbol of the healing arts to this day is still what? The caduceus, the serpent on a staff. Two of them, actually, Ida and Pingala. That's what they were called in the old days. That's what they're called in India. Um, so, okay. To satisfy, fulfill the lust of the flesh and gluttony. What is all that about? And sexual excess was an attribute of Pan, the goat god, who was famous for his sexual conquest. It was often depicted with an erect phallus. Okay. Okay. Okay, I showed you this before. Santa and Satan are saying basically the same thing. Um, capricious. By the way, that's from Capricorn. Somebody's capricious. The word satire, someone who has a t satirical humor, comes from Saturn. Satirical humor is poking fun at someone else's expenses or their weakness or faults, which is the role of Saturn for Satan, the accuser of her brother. Father Time in Europe, we talked about this. It was Nicholas, the old thin man. We talked about that. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, Michael the Archangel when he was contending with the devil over the body of Moses. He didn't hurl forth a railing accusation against the devil. He simply said what? Let the Lord judge thee. We can learn from that. Because the first thing you do when somebody accuses you is want to accuse them back. That's the way we are. Okay, Saturn was stern father figure. We did all this. And now this is, this is another proof of what I'm trying to teach you. When Christ was on the cross, it's written, not a bone of his body shall be broken. Huh, why? Because Saturn rules what? Your teeth and your bones. And Satan had no power over Christ. Why do you think they had that in there? I mean, let's look at the mysteries behind the mysteries. I mean, and that normally broke the knees to cause the body to be be unable to support itself, therefore causes asphyxiation and the compression of the lungs. What part of the body does Capricorn and Saturn rule? The knees. Oh, it's such coincidences, Ron. You're not going to tell me that's related to astrology. I am telling you it is. But they had all these mysteries hidden in here, and for them with eyes to see and see and hear, you, you know, you, you're seeing the mysteries. Read my book if you haven't. Read my book. I swear you'll, you'll be... You open your eyes to so many things. Jovial comes from the word Jove, Latin for Jupiter, which means born unlucky. We talked about that. Happy and healthy. Saturn's constriction, calcification, coagulation. Saturn is darkness, fear, isolation, paranoia. Saturn rules separation and alienation and divorce. You know, I was thinking about my own injuries that I've had in my life, and they're all Mars things. 
Mars because Mars rules your muscle, muscular system and your, uh, your ligaments and all the things that keep it all together, the muscles and all that. And all my entries in my life have been that. Rotator cuff, this one, which I, just, I was supposed to have surgery, I didn't. I got strong around it. This one went out the other day when it was down and when I fell. This here joint, you know, all that's Mars squaring my sun. And uh, Mars in Pisces, anyway. So, you know, and this you'll learn a lot when you read my book about Peter. Peter was symbolic of Saturn. Okay, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. All that Saturn. Okay. Basically, they're just reversed. Okay, the cross over this crescent, and uh, Jupiter's the crescent over the cross. Okay. I think it's a repeat of what we did. Um, okay, let's go back here. Too late. <laughs> so, it, it is good for you to. Um, it's in your, your workbook, which you had from the first class, is to get to understand the parts of the body that exi all this stuff rules, okay? Aquarius rules the ankles, the P Pisces, the feet, Capricorn, the knees, the thighs are Sagittarius, and then you go up here, Libra, the reins, you know, rules the kidneys and all that. Um, the, the Leo rules the heart, and Gemini rules the arms and the hands. You know, if I see someone of the um, uh, a Mars seriously afflicted in Capricorn, I expect they've had knee problems. You know, I told you about the guy that came for reading the other day, you know, and as soon as I, I had no idea, but he'd been through so much pain and misery with surgery on his knees. They sat down and all of a sudden I said, you, you should have something wrong with surgery or some kind of injury to your knees, and he about fell out of his chair. But, you know, that's how you, you're going to learn that by knowing this. So he had a Mars affliction in Capricorn, I, and it was so afflicted, I knew with Saturn that I knew there was something wrong with the knees. Um, you know, I'm doing a chart, and I see Mars rising in the east on the first house cusp. Now, it may not be in Aries, which rules the head, but it's the first house, which is Aries' house. And generally, I'll find people that have that have scars or Mars or injuries on their head even though it's just not in Aries, it's just rising in the east. Um, if it's um, Mars afflicting the moon, very often they'll have had surgery. If it's woman, possibly breast surgery. They'll have wounds or cutting Mars on their stomach. Okay. I told you about the guy I did a chart and uh, my, my ex-wife's boyfriend before she met me. And in fact, it was interesting because I did his chart and um, I said, you know, you have Mars and Cancer in the fourth house. Something happened to you when you were born and something to do with cutting. And he said, Ron, he said, when I was born, I was born cesarean. And the scalpel that he used to open my mother left a scar across my face. And it's almost gone today because he's, he'd grown up and he's able to get rid of a lot of it. But the point being, that said it in the chart. It's, the chart speaks to you. It, it begins to talk to you. And the more you start doing this, you're going to see that happening. And you say, where did that come from? You know, where did it come from? So I want you to, I want you to start doing charts, even for your friends. Don't wait and say, oh, I'm not good enough. Saturn to Mercury. Don't say, I'm not good enough. Don't say, I can't do it. I'm not, I don't know enough. You know, don't do that. Because what you're going to do is you're going to cripple your development. So every time you get a chance, you're with a friend, say, oh, let me look at your chart just casually, and start looking at it, and start pulling things out, and start talking to you. The more you, you've learned a lot, you have no idea how much you know. I can tell as I ask questions in here, I see the responses I get, they're amazing. So, it's, yes, honey? If you said Mars, so you said Mars was the Venus, Aries is the first house, what if it was like fifth house Leo? Uh, um, would it be um, it could be. It could be if it's afflicted. Yeah, it's good. Very good. Could be. Um, again, look for two or three witnesses. Remember, I keep telling you that. So Leo, fifth house, 
and the sun, right? If I see a lot of afflictions to the sun, for example, with Saturn and the sun, what do you think I'm going to see? What do you think that would interpret? Afflicted. Huh? Good. We're we're all halfway there. What part of the what part of the body does the Leo rule? What else? Who said back? Good for you, girl. Generally, I will see back problems. I will see back problems. Um, again, I don't know. How you, you, you know, you're looking at a chart and it's coming out at you. It's talking to you. So if you see if you see a Saturn affliction going to the sun, even Mars to the sun, it'd be often pain in the back. Mars injury to the back. Okay, I have Mars squaring my sun. I've had back problems all my life because I, when I was young, I was a judo competitor. And I threw somebody one day, and I was doing it the wrong way, and I came up the, with too much of a forward motion, and I injured myself. And for many years, I had sciatic problems. I've grown out of them somehow. I don't know. It seems like I got over them. But the whole point is, Mars squaring sun. I should have said, oh, Ron, you shouldn't be doing jujitsu. You know, it's not the best thing for you to be doing with your back. But then there's the other side of that. Maybe I'll make my back stronger, right? You got two arguments on that one, don't you? But yeah. You also, um, just by reflex action, the opposite part of the body can be affected. Instead of the. It affects the eyes. It gets really, really bad. Um, diabetes. Oh, all that, yes. The eyes. And. Um, and even the squares to different parts of the body. Well, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Venus affliction. Grand cross on Venus. Okay. Uh, with um, Jupiter, Neptune, and the moon. And Venus rules what? The kidneys. And Venus also rules sweets. Think about these connections now. Now think, this has been given to us from where? From thousands of years this stuff's been around. And they've always said, Venus rules sweets and love and all that. We give chocolates to someone we love. You know, we do all these neat things, give sweets, right? But Venus is said to be a ruler of sweets. So sweets produces a problem. If we get too much of it, what does it produce? Diabetes. What's one of the things that happens to a person that's diabetic besides the things you talked about? The kidneys go. It's one of the first things that goes, generally. Okay, one of the major things that goes. So what does is, what is Libra rule? Kidneys and the rings. What's rules, what rules Libra? Venus. You see where I'm coming from? I mean, it all comes back down to this uh, as above, so below, as within, so without. And, you know, it just happens. And so not all those things are going to happen to us in our earlier years. I remember doing a chart for a young girl at a party. Just she wanted me to look at her chart. And I brought it up on a computer real quick, and I had a little hand thing. And I said, you know, you've got a real likelihood of having diabetes. She was shocked. She says, my whole family has, and my grandparents died of diabetes. My whole family's got it. She says, I can't believe you said that. So in a way, I saved her because she was very disciplined from then on. She said, no more. You know, I'm going to start watching my diet. I'm going to be very careful. But the fact is, that little warning in that moment was enough to give her a different thought about her her lifestyle and what she's doing to herself. Anyway, enough of all this. Are you ready for a break, honey? No. No? Okay. Ron, you had mentioned that if you were still um, Saturn in the 12th house, and that what that could mean. Well, Saturn, remember always one thing about Saturn. Saturn is called skeletons in the closet. Remember that? So I, I picked the right one? Okay, <laughs> so I said a lot about Saturn. But one thing about it is Saturn is skeleton. And generally that's past life stuff too, okay? It's also things that are uh, behind us. And I mean, I remember, I can remember in prison doing charts for guys. And I said, it's Saturn in the eighth house. I said, you know, I said, I know you don't want to talk about this. It's called skeleton in the closet, right? Something you don't want to talk about. But I said, I, I believe you've been involved in, you were involved in a murder in the past. And why? Death house, eighth house. It was very afflicted. And he acknowledged to me. He said, yeah, I have been. He said, how do you know that? I said, it's in your chart. I mean, you know, if I'd have been a prosecutor, I'd have taken him away. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the point being, that's how accurate it can be sometimes. And when you see things, we all have, we don't all, a lot of us have skeletons in our closet, things we don't want to talk about. And generally it revolves around things that are sexual. 
just the way it is. It's a, that's the biggest taboo. And it is kind of interesting when you think about it. Saturn rules this. So does Mars, but Saturn has a lot about this. Saturn rules this generative energy and all this and sexual stuff. And what does the accuser work best with? Think about it. What is accusation most powerfully directed at? It's a person's sexual misdeeds. It doesn't matter whatever else misdeeds. You want to bring down a politician? Catch him in an affair with somebody. You want to bring down Clinton? Get Monica on her knees. <laughs> Forgive me for that. <laughs> but <laughs> the point being... I heard you know, uh, Larry proposed... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet she did. <laughs> oh, that's awful. And it's probably true, though. You know that? Yeah, it should be, yeah, exactly. But that's the way, that's where accusing works the best. Uh, you know, study the, the life of Martin Luther King, and the FBI was on him all the time trying to bring him down. The one thing they couldn't, they wanted to get, and they got a lot of, was his affairs. You know, that would be a way to destroy the man, his credibility, his uh, integrity. So Saturn still works really well on those levels. See what I mean? So, anyway. So any, who had a question? Somebody else did. Yes, Michelle. Did you find it? Looking at, um, I was looking at the Gemini area, which is at the top of the chart, but there are no planets there. So then I looked in the third house, and there's Mars and the Sun in the third house. And there are some, but a little bit odd aspects between Mars and the Sun. And, um, and other things like uh, uh, Uranus and Pluto. Do you want to see it? Do, yeah, we can do that. Actually, let me ask Elena first. Okay. Should we wait a while, or do you want to wait a little longer? I can, I can probably pull your chart if I have it right here. I'll pull it up. Um, you know what? I, I really, I know when you were, when you're at this point, you're starting to look yourself. Yeah. I love that. So because that means you're really starting to get it. And you're, like, you're looking and searching. So let me do this. Let me see if I have your chart on here. If I do, we'll bring it up real quick for the group to look at together, and we'll see if we can come up with anything here. Okay. Okay. Uh, 